Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, oh my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. 
In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Christ Jesus in accord with the favor of his will. For the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Remembering that we are still in our sequence of readings from St. Mark's Gospel each Sunday, picking up today where we left off last Sunday, imagine how the apostles must have felt in this moment. They had been called from the routine of their normal and ordinary lives to follow this man named Jesus from Nazareth, who, as we heard last Sunday, 
wasn't even accepted in his hometown. They traveled with him as he journeyed from place to place, preaching and working miracles, teaching in parables, proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God that was at hand. He was curing the sick, healing the crippled, raising the dead, casting out demons, and calming a storm. They were with him as Jesus was revealing his identity as God. As they journeyed with Jesus, they encountered people who truly believed in who he was. And they came across people who had no faith at all. Now, Jesus was sending them out on their own to do the same, to preach repentance with authority over unclean spirits. Jesus sent them out two by two with nothing but their walking sticks and their sandals and with an assurance that there would be people who would reject their works and their message. But they also took with them their faith in the fidelity and the power of God. It is this same faith and fidelity, faith in the fidelity and power of God that empowered the prophet Amos, a simple man who cared for animals in a pasture and pruned fruit trees in the orchard. That's what a dresser of sycamores is, according to Google. It was that faith in the fidelity and power of God that allowed Amos to hear and answer God's call to be a prophet, to take God's word to his chosen people, even the most powerful among them. Faith in the fidelity and power of God is what allows us as fallen human beings to rise above our human weaknesses, above our miseries and our faults and our fears. It is our faith in the fidelity and power of God that allows us to be lifted above our failures and our sins so that we too can bring God's salvation to the world around us. But what is the fidelity and power of God? The fidelity and power of God is the message spoken throughout the ages since the fall of creation when God promised that the son of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. It is the promise to Noah never to destroy creation again by a flood. The fidelity and power of God is the promise of descendants numbering more than the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore that God made to Abraham. It is the deliverance of the chosen people from slavery in Egypt through Moses. It is the promise of an heir to King David, an heir who would sit upon his throne forever. The fidelity and power of God is Jesus himself, the word of God made flesh. In Jesus, who is the fidelity and power of God, 
we discover who God really is as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is relationship. God is love. We see it through Jesus' life of prayer, in his faithfulness to the will of the Father as he went to the cross, as he promised the Holy Spirit to his followers. In Jesus, the fidelity and power of God, we come to understand that our God desires the renewal of all things not its destruction, that God desires the rehabilitation of all those fallen away from him through sin, not their punishment or their death, that God desires the restoration of his beautiful creation. With faith in our God, there is always hope. There is always love, even in the midst of life's darkest days or greatest storms. In Jesus, the fidelity and power of God, he reveals to us a reunification, a rejoining of all peoples, from all places, from every age in the kingdom of God. Union with God, communion with one another in heaven. This is the great hope that belongs to our call, a life lived in God a life lived not by our own powers, plans, and designs, but based upon, built on the solid foundation of the fidelity and power of God. The great hope that belongs to our call is a life that relies on Jesus and his grace, not our own efforts. Yesterday, here in this cathedral, the Sisters of the Incarnate Word and Blessed Sacrament celebrated their jubilees, the anniversary of vows for 10 of their sisters. One of them has been a professed sister for 80 years. She's not 80 years old, she's been a nun for 80 years. Another 70 years. Six of these women celebrated 60 years of their vows, and two of them celebrated their 50th anniversary. Added together, in the 610 years of religious life that were celebrated in this church yesterday, by women who have truly lived and continue to live out each and every day the true meaning of Christian discipleship, leaving the world behind to embrace heaven itself, we are able to witness examples of faith in the fidelity and power of God in our modern day. It is a love for Jesus, their ever faithful spouse. It is their faith, their love of God, and their trust that in the end, he is all that they will ever need that, had, that has brought his presence, his word, his love, his healing, and his gentle mercy to so many of us in this city. God's call for us to rely on him and not ourselves, to rely not on our own expertise 
or in our own wealth, not on our own abilities or our gifts or our strengths, but in his fidelity and in his power. In the person whose name is Jesus, this call from God that we receive every day, each in a unique way, by answering this call is how we will see the kindness of God and truly receive his salvation. I believe in one God. in our God who is more than we will ever need, we offer these prayers and petitions. For the church, may she continue to call and send many missionaries into the world to preach the salvation of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those in positions of authority, may they use their influence to bring honesty, justice, and peace to every community. We pray to the Lord. For those discerning their life's journey, may they be open to inspiration of the Holy Spirit in their lives and respond freely and generously to God's call. We pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from incurable or terminal illness, may they be comforted by their faith and by the sacrament of holy anointing. We pray to the Lord. For the families of Arlene Trial, Al Oshusky, and Jacqueline Gladney, may they be consoled by the Lord in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the people of the parish and for all the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Almighty, everlasting God, we offer you these, our needs, and we ask you to help us trust that you will answer them in accordance with your holy will, leading us always towards union with you and with one another, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. 